All right, John. So what do you think of the new Tommy Robinson documentary? Um, I think it was needed. Um, if we got a look at how he's gone about it, this is a man that has had um, good advice, right? Because he's had disclosure in mind. I think he's, he's massively learned from mistakes of the past. And how he's put it together was as if a barrister or a solicitor was putting a case together. He's covered everything, right? He's used transparency as much as he's maybe allowed to, because even his briefings, which if, if we look at how the police, before we do a briefing prior to deployment, that would be held as sensitive disclosure and only with argument would be released. Tommy, what he's done, he's put that on camera. He's put everything up front. He has been totally open with it. His questioning of the victim again was on camera. A few leading questions, but on the whole, bear in mind it's not his tradecraft, a very good way of eliciting information from a vulnerable person. So he's kept with, within the remit of the victim codes of conduct when he's interviewing a vulnerable child. Um, and then he's put, the, again, the, um, the copper that he's um, accosted on the street, you know, very good investigative journalism. He really has put a cat amongst the pigeons. And I think when they will be putting the paperwork together, I don't know if they've already done it, it will be done in a really professional way. And the key word is disclosure. That man has done his disclosure properly and he's worked it worked within transparency. And I think it really is an A1 piece of work. I, I do. And this shows a power of people doing the right thing. It, without doubt, there would have been legal advice all the way through that because all they want to do is put his ass in prison. But I, I did a little interview the other day shouting out that how professional and how transparent it was. And I just think it's a cracking good job. And bear in mind the positions that these people held within the community, they're in the legal profession. And one of them was quite high up within the Muslim Council for that region. This is appalling. This is malfeasance. This is perversion. This is blatant corruption um, in such a small provincial community. And I hope it goes as a benchmark for further, further operations to come forward. If we see the work of, of these paedophile hunters, they first started up, they were vilified as being vigilantes and being the unprofessional. Now, they are now a finely tuned criminal justice independent entity. And I totally applaud their actions. I've, I've done stuff with a couple of them. I'm going to be interviewing one this week. And they work within the parameters of the law. This is going to be the future. Um, this is something that, that I'm setting up now. We, we've just done um, a job regarding missing kids. Uh, hopefully we'll be getting more work. And you're going to see that there is nothing stopping civilians getting together. If you, if you look at what the water board do, mm. If someone is procuring water illegally, right, they're abstracting water or the electricity bill with electricity. They're abstracting it and the gas the same. They divert the pipes. The gas board, the electricity board, the water board will go and get warrants, right, from a court signed by a magistrate. They'll make an application the same as, as an officer would. They swear before it. They affirm before a court. They get the power of entry. The police will come along and have to come along to prevent a breach of the peace so they can do that. And then they'll put together a file which will go through the prosecution to, to our courts, which are the people's courts, the magistrates or the crown courts. There's not nothing stopping anyone from doing this. The only thing that does it is expense because solicitors and barristers charge an exorbitant amount of money and you have to really pay for justice. So what he's done is basically he's done a, a, a criminal justice investigation as a civilian. A lot of these detectives now that work police forces are retired. So again, they're civilians. I got a job thing through the other day. They send it through Reed. Um, I can't go from because my vetting won't allow me. I'm banned from ever working in, in the police now. But I still get jobs through. Um, one come through for MI6 the other day, sent through to me. Please do not disclose wow. to a third party. Didn't fancy it. No, they, they, <laughs> they want investigators for, um, for corruption, government corruption. So there's obviously things going on that they are looking into. But they'll all be civilians. The intelligence services are civilians. You know, MI6, they've got civilian ranks. So, yeah, I think it is a cracking bit of, of, of footage. Um, I don't think in any way it shows um, his bias towards, you know, ethnicity or religion or anything. It's balanced and it's transparent. And I say, well done you. And I hope they get a result. I hope that there is an independent investigation that the government now pay for. 
and the IPC pick up and let's see if this copper that is there, he should stand trial in a Crown Court at, at the public expense, nice. not at his expense. But have you seen it? No, um, not yet. I'm going to have to no. watch it. No, it's good. It's good. It's called The Rape of Britain. And um, yeah, I've got someone to, to relay my, um, my, my, my thanks to him for doing it because oh, it's wow. definitely give victims and survivors in that community who have been absolutely denigrated and attacked for coming forward. It's given them hope. And I hope it gives hope again to, to victims in Cumbria, to Burnley, to, to, to Blackpool, to, to Luton and all these other places that have been hit by this this scourge, which is these grooming gangs, regardless of, of, of their religious beliefs, ethnicity. Because let's get this right. There, there is, there's not even an indigenous culture on this planet that allows perversion with children. They've even on an anthropological um, sort of scale, they, they they did it on various tribal groups. So even in Papua New Guinea, the pygmy people there, um, if anyone is caught in any way with, with a sexual liking to a child, they are banished to the jungle for a period of two years and they know that that person will perish alone. Mm -hmm. So nowhere, because I get it all the time, people saying it's in the Quran, this, or it's in the Talmud. No, it isn't. The only people that do this to children are perverts. You know, and this is it they're perverts and regardless of religion and everything else so um and when they get into a collective and they groom of course it's organized crime they were making money yeah. they people were paying yeah. money for them kids and and there was a payoff so no one got into the justice system for doing it mm -hmm. and that's what it was and there would be a lot of corruption and once that they put their toe in that murky pond they're all filthy and that that buys their silence Definitely. Thank you, John Wedger. And if you want to watch a two and a half hour podcast with John Wedger and Darren, the link is in the description box below this video. Thanks for watching. Cheers. Thanks for watching. This podcast is sponsored by Gadfly Press. We're proud to announce the publication of Scotland's Johnny Boy, The Bird That Never Flew. From the back cover, all his life, Johnny Boy Steele has been running first from an abusive father, then from the rigours of an approved school and a young offender's jail, and finally, from the harshness of adult prison. This book details how the Steele brothers staged the most daring breakout that Glasgow's Barlini prison had ever seen, and recounts what happened when their younger brother Joseph was falsely accused of the greatest mass murder in Scottish legal history. We're talking the ice cream wars there. If Johnny Boy had wings, he would have flown to help his family, but he would have to wait for freedom to use his expertise to publicise young Joe's miscarriage of justice. This is a compelling, often shocking, and uncompromisingly honest account of how the human spirit can survive against almost crushing odds. It is a story of family love, friendship, and ultimately, a desire for justice. So, Scotland's Johnny Boy, The Bird That Never Flew, is available worldwide on Amazon. Link in the description box below this video. Thank you for supporting our sponsor. Cheers.